All right. All right. All right. Let's see what we got here. Cool. Broadcasting. Great. 14 viewers. Where's everybody else? Oh yeah, man. Grab a uh, grab the stuff that's on that list from here. And a reminder, if you are in the building, you need to come into Classroom A and pick up supplies. Oh, yeah, look at those pizzas rolling in. Woohoo! Got my water. All right, so a uh, quick recap. What you need, according to the supplies, are something close to this. You need five cups of some sort, bowls, cups, whatever kind of vessel you got. And you need a handful of things that will be our array contents. So the sort of kosher one that's in the lesson plan is a little bead with a tag on it like that. But uh, pretty much anything will do. Ideally, they're kind of all the same. So I got I got I got five or six of those. Um, so, so that's <coughs> a good number to have, um, and that'll be kind of your, your 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 kit there. All right, we're gonna give everybody just a couple more minutes to get in here. All right, whatever. Well, I still only see 21 in here, so those of you who are not there, I'll find out. But uh, whatever, we'll, we'll go on and get started, I think. Um, cool. So, yeah, that's good. We're going to do some arts and crafts time now. So uh, some people some people are like, I think come out of this being like, that was the best way to learn programming ever. And some people are like, why the fuck are we using these beads and cups and all this stuff? So you'll get to find out shortly which camp you're in. But um, I think this is in the past turned out to be a pretty good way to demonstrate uh, the conceptual points about arrays, which is what we're most interested in for the time being. So uh, before we dive into the arts and crafts, arrays, what are we talking about? Well, uh, an array is a data structure. which uh, is great because now I've defined a thing you didn't know what it means in terms of another thing that maybe you also don't know what it means. But when we say when we say a data structure, we're talking about uh, some relatively abstract pattern or uh, technique for organizing data. And the data that we're talking about organizing could be one thing, could be like a single number or a single string. Uh, or in the case of an array, it could be multiple things because the most, one of the sort of fundamental points about an array is it's a data structure, particularly for dealing with collections. So it's a it's a collection data structure. And in the case of Ruby, we would say that the array is probably our most fundamental collection data structure. Uh, almost all programming languages are gonna have a data structure like this. Sometimes it might be called something else in another language, perhaps a list 
or a vector. Those are those are common uh, common other terms for similar data structures you might encounter in other languages, but Ruby we call it an array. Um, the quick and dirty syntax is pretty easy. We use square brackets to indicate an array that says make a new And so we can just demo that in IRB real quick. Uh, make one. And I was showing this to Foxtrot yesterday. How do we, how can we, how can we verify or find out what type of object this thing is? We can ask it for its class and we see that, hey, it is an array. And uh, one thing that we're gonna drill in a little bit more, uh, I think on Thursday, we're gonna talk a little bit more about objects and classes in Ruby. It's worth noting that this square bracket syntax is really just some fancy Ruby syntax for saying array.new. Is a new array equal to np square brackets? Yes, so it's just an object, it's just a class, just a Ruby class, uh, as we'll be talking more about classes later. So it just happens to be one that uh, A, comes built into the language, and B, we use it a whole freaking lot. Um, so uh, arrays are super, super duper important, maybe, that easily in the top five most important things that you will learn about in module one, maybe in like the top two or three. Um, and you might ask yourself, why is that the case? And it comes back to this idea of collection data structures. Collections are basically everywhere in programming. And I was talking yesterday to Foxtrot a little bit about strings, saying a little bit of the same thing. You know, strings are super important just because so much of the programming we're going to do throughout our careers and you're going to do throughout Turing involves text in some way. And since strings are our way of representing text in uh, code, you need to know it super, super well backwards and forwards. And so the same thing kind of holds true for collection data structures. Um, when you're doing programming, you're just going to encounter it over and over and over basically every problem you do is going to deal with collections in some way, um, partly because uh, it can just be a really nice way to build solutions, and partly because if you had to do a thing, if you had to do a thing only once, you probably wouldn't bother writing code to do it. But once you got to do a thing a bunch of times, now it's time to start bringing in some programming, and so um, it's really common that we're we're writing code to automate some process over a collection of things, or to automate doing some process for a collection of things. Uh, so that's cool. The uh, Couple sort of high level points about um, arrays. Well, let me, I'm gonna pause for a quick Q&A break. Pausing for any questions so far. Let me know if there's anything you wanna talk about about that brief overview. <clears throat> cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Uh, so I'm gonna keep going. Uh, the uh, another thing that you'll when we talk about data structures in general and, and throughout the course of Turing, you'll encounter a few different data structures. We'll often have a handful of terms uh, for describing their properties, uh, for describing some of their behaviors, and especially in the context of collection data structures, there's a few things that we care about. One is that uh, arrays are ordered. They're fundamentally ordered, so they have an, the collection has a notion of in in what order were things put into the collection. So we can think of a first thing, a second thing, a third thing, whereas uh, some collection data structures might be fundamentally unordered. Uh, they, in, in Ruby, arrays are dynamically sized, which is a fancy way of saying you can add things to an array as you go and Ruby will be responsible for making sure that the array can grow as needed to accommodate your new things. So um, in certain languages, certain data structures, you might find that when you create an array, you need to tell it, hey, here's an array of 10 slots, and now I can only put 10 things. In Ruby, that's not the case. In Ruby, I can create an array, and as I go on later, I can add things to it. Um, and the other important thing about an array, I'm running out of space here, but we would say that it is uh, numerically indexed 
uh, which is a fancy way of saying that we can access things in the array by their numeric position, right? And that kind of, the numeric indexing kind of goes along with the fact that it's ordered. Since the thing is fundamentally ordered, you have a notion of saying like, okay, give me the thing at position zero, give me the thing at position one, give me the thing at position two, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of the high level uh, basics. Oops, what am I doing here? Um, we're gonna now dive into the fun stuff, which is our arts and crafts. And so I, uh, this is gonna be interesting. We're gonna, y'all are gonna have to kind of follow along at home as best you can. And please do stop me in Slack if anything gets confusing or you're not sure like what the instructions are saying. And as we go through, I'm gonna be following along with the arrays section of that lesson plan that I shared in Slack. So a few minutes ago, I shared uh, this link to the lesson plan here. So this is where we're going to be. We're going to be following along, and um, it the the notes sometimes discuss um, some Ruby syntax, and I'm going to ask you to come back afterward and do that on your own. So we're going to work through the whole thing uh, using the arts and crafts supplies first, and kind of talk about the conceptual points, and then I'm going to ask you to come back through and go through the same steps using the um, using uh, Ruby and IRB. So. Da -da 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 -da. Cool. So the first thing you want to do, go ahead and lay down your piece of paper and write data in large letters. So I'm doing mine on the board here. Uh, let me do one thing. Too. I'm going to print this sucker out. Uh, so here is my data. Yours will probably be on the desk or table or whatever you're using. And uh, Oh, one more thing I didn't mention. I'm gonna do we're gonna do we're do posse points for uh, creative creative use of materials. So if you're using something funky, send us a picture of it, and we'll get some posse points out there. Because I'm curious to see what kind of improvisational supplies people came up with. <clears throat> all right, sweet, cool. Uh, all right, so go ahead and get the, go ahead and take a second to get your paper set up. I need to grab one more thing real quick. I'll be back in two seconds. So let me just pull this up here. All right, cool. There we go. Now you'll see the see the see the screen. Uh -huh. Okay, so we talked about <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me. We talked about the array being uh, ordered, being numerically indexed. So when we talk about uh, an array, we often think about it as a collection of slots into which we could insert something. And uh, I actually am gonna wipe these out for now because uh, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself there. Um, I'm gonna ask you to kind of pretend as you follow along that the cups without the red under them don't exist. Uh, and so we, uh, in computer science, we talked about this briefly the other day, we generally count from zero. So when I talk about what's the first thing in the array, what's the initial thing, that's gonna be the thing <clears throat> at position zero. So when I have an empty array, my empty data array, uh, so far I've got nothing in it, so I'm gonna have one index that exists there and that's gonna be position zero. When I fetch the data inside, uh, the value inside data of zero, uh, what am I gonna get back at this point? If I say, hey, give me, the thing out of there. Anybody have a guess? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we got typing, nil, boom, done, exactly, right? So nil, and that, you know, makes some some intuitive sense. Uh, you know, nil is Ruby's stand-in value for saying, like, oh, there's nothing here. What is the value at a position of a collection where there's nothing? Well, that's going to be nil. So that's cool. Nil is going to be what we would get if we ask that for itself. Uh, so what do we want to do? Well, we'd like to actually put something in the array, and... Uh, how do we do that? Well, we're going to just take a bead. Woohoo, got a bead. And I'm going to put it in position zero. I'm going to put some color on here so we can see this a little bit better. So I've put a value in position zero. Uh oh, my fan is blowing around here. Um, Another another super common. So so far, what have we looked at? We've looked at uh, accessing values. At a position. Uh, another common thing we want to do with an array is we want to count it. We want to know how many things are in the array. Uh, so now I have my array. I have one thing in the zero slot, the bead here. And if I ask the array, what is its count? It'll tell me that there is one, one thing. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, and nil, zero. Oh, we got one. Yeah, the, the zero thing is interesting because we... We refer to this as position zero, but then when we're talking about how many things there are, we're still going to count uh, normally, right? We want to say that there's zero things in the array, even though the only thing that exists is at position zero. At index zero, we would say that there are one thing. Uh, so the next thing we might want to do, we might want to set the next value of the array. And if this first thing is position zero, then the next thing, unsurprisingly, is position one. So to insert another bead into, into the array, I can assign the value at position one. Coloring in my tag so you all can see it. And so we would do that. <clears throat> and now uh, the array has two slots in it, has slot zero, slot one. <laughs> the... Another common thing we might want to ask an array is what's the first value? And what are the last values? <clears throat> uh, and so with this setup of the array right now, if I ask the array, what is the first thing? It'll be some bead. If I ask the array similarly, what is the last thing? We're going to get the same kind of response. We're going to get a bead, is there? Uh, in our case, we got two beads. Uh, I'm using colors here to denote them. You might uh, be, you know, if you've got spaghetti noodles or whatever you're using, you might have a different uh, approach. So, you know, from just looking at what type of things these are, they're not necessarily distinguishable, but per suppose hypothetically we had some color method. I could ask for the color of this bead or the color of this bead. Uh, in the case of my first one, I'm going to get back here, the red. Or in the case of the last one, I'll get back the orange. Uh, and so that behaves as we would expect. It's interesting to note uh, that in this setup right now, the first element is the same as asking for the value at what position. So we said we can retrieve a value at a position. The first element is the same as asking for the value at which position. Position zero, zero yeah. Chris is getting getting a jump on you guys since he's here in the building, but <laughs> um, 
There we go. We got the answers coming in. Yeah. Yeah, position zero, right? And similarly, if we think about the last in terms of position, uh, retrieving the bead, retrieving the last element in the array is going to be similar to asking for the index at what position? Yeah, one. Got it, Emily. Emily for the answer. Uh, yep. And so you know, it makes sense so far. But the uh, the reason I want to kind of like drill into that a little bit more is that what's interesting to note is that one of those is going to be consistent, and one of them will change over time. Because when I ask when I ask the array for uh, yeah, exactly. Geneve has the point as well. When I ask the array for its first element, that's always going to be telling me, hey, which one is at position zero? Those two are basically always going to mean the same thing in the context of an array. However, last uh, is going to be something a little bit more dynamic because we talked about the array being dynamically sized. As I continue to add more things to the array, it'll insert them at the end. Uh, and so as I go on, last becomes synonymous with different indices in the array, depending on how many things we've added. So that's some good stuff. <laughs> um, so so far we've talked about so far we've talked about this. Uh, well, we talked about retrieving values at a position. We also talked about setting values at a position. And that's what we meant when I said, okay, let's assign the value at position zero to this red bead, or let's assign the value at position one to this orange bead. Another uh, pretty common operator, let's see if I swivel the sucker over here. Another common thing we'll wanna do to an array is uh, append a value, meaning add a value, the end. And in this case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to say we're going to append another bead to our array. Maybe I'll get a, I need more colors up here. Maybe I'll get this green. This is good. So I'm going to append a value to the array. Well, what's the current last position? The current last position is one. So if I append a thing, it's going to go in the next slot. So I'm gonna put my bead there. I'm gonna add a new slot to our array. So now we've got zero, one, and two. Added a green one there. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so I ran, uh, I added uh, a bead to the array. Now again, running count will have changed. One, two, three things. So asking the array for its count, it'll tell me there are three things in it. Cool. Nice. Cool. Uh, so that's kind of the deal there. And that's, I'd say that uh, it's, it's good to know about inserting in position. Sometimes you need to say, okay, I specifically want to set the value at spot number zero or spot number one to something. Uh, but I'd say more often, this is actually what we want to do. More often we're concerned with, hey, got something, let me just append it to the end. Let me just add a value to the end of my collection because generally we don't necessarily care about exactly what position it goes, we just wanna add to it, right? Um, so, uh, let's take a break. Uh, and what I'd like to do now is, well, actually let's do this. Let's take a, let's take a quick four minute break and let's restart at 11.35 and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work through the code examples from this like first couple steps here. Uh, so we can start working with some actual syntax as well. So uh, take a break, be back uh, 1135, ready to go. Yeah.
No, but I might want them to include a dark beer. I was gonna say like hot food sounds like. It's kind of hard to tell the color. Oh, yeah. I don't know if label mine the same color. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a blue or green. Yeah. It's, uh, it's tricky doing this because you can't, like, tell, like, if people are, you know what I mean? It's hard to see. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Mic check, mic check. All right, there we go. Here we got a special, appear special appearance from Drew over here. Say hello to everyone, Drew. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man, nothing like a snow day. Yeah, you probably get some points for that. That's probably worth some points. Um, all right, cool. So we said, uh, we said we're going to kind of go through these first couple steps and talk about it in Ruby syntax. Um, Specifically, we're looking for some some syntax to do those specific operations that we worked through before. Uh, so first off, how do I make? I got data is my array. How do I make that? Well, data is an empty array. Um, how do I set the value at a position? We talked about setting the value at the position, and the way we do that is by saying ar array. We use square brace notation to indicate the position, and then we use assignment syntax to indicate the value. So I want to say 
the array element at position one should be assigned to the string value. So I can say data of, I'll do zero since that's what we did first. We inserted the, we inserted the red B to position zero and I just realized y'all can't see my screen. Uh, so hold up on that. All right, so just to recap, I said data equals empty square braces to create a new array. Uh, and data of zero is bead. I'll just, use a, I'll just use a string of the word bead here to represent that. Uh, and we can look at that. And nice thing about one cool thing about Ruby, especially in IRB or Pry, uh, Ruby is able to give us a nice printed version of that so we can see uh, the so far we have the array indicated by square braces. We got one thing in it, our bead. And uh, so next things we looked at, we looked at counting. So if I want to know how many things are there, I can say data dot count. And in this case, I'm just calling the count method on data. Um, calling the count method on data. Uh, da, 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 da. And uh, also, so we said to assign a value at a position, we use the square braces with a number indicating what index and the equal sign. Retrieving the value is the same, just without the equal sign. So data, give me the element at position zero. Oh, it's a bead, right? And give me the element at position one. Well, so far in this example, I haven't put anything at one yet, so I'm going to get nil. And interestingly, I can actually ask for anything I want. Give me the position at some huge, give me the value at some big number. Uh, the array is smart enough to know that, hey, I don't have anything in that position, so you get a nil. Uh, and then finally, we said, okay, we'll set another value with set position one. Data of one is equal to bead. I have an orange bead in mine. So now what is data? Oh, it's a bead and an orange bead. I should have made the first one a, a red bead. Data uh, asking for the count, two things as we'd expect. And then uh, finally, the last one we talked about was appending. And there's a couple of ways to do the appending to the end of an array in Ruby, but uh, one that you'll see pretty commonly is an operator we call the shovel operator. Uh, and the shovel looks like this, two left-facing angle brace signs. So if I have data and I want to add to it, I'll say data, double left angle brace, bead. And I have a green bead as my next one. And as we mentioned, the array is smart enough to say, okay, well, I have zero filled and I have one filled. So adding a thing to the end, I will put it in position two, put the green bead in number two. Uh, and so that's cool. And so again, we call this the shovel operator. Uh, da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so let's do a couple more, a couple more complicated things now. Uh, let's suppose that we ran, uh, we said that the shovel is one way to add contents to the end of an array. It turns out that there, the other common way is by calling a method called push. You can say shovel value or you can say push and pass it a value. So let's do another interesting example. Let's suppose that we added the position, uh, we added the value nil. So we said, pretend that we said array, I have to clean some things out here. Oops, I erased my zero. Let's suppose that we were in our terminal to say push with the argument nil. Uh, what will happen in this case, oh, I've got juggling markers here, uh, is that we will actually insert a new element. The array will look, say, okay, we have zero is full, one is full, two is full. So the next available spot is gonna be index three. Let me now create the empty slot 
three. So now you would need to add your cup labeled three onto your array, onto your paper. Uh, but what am I going to put into three? Well, put nothing in it, right? We put nil into three. And so we can model that process back in, back in IRB. I have my data. I can say data. Remember we said push is simply the shovel is actually just an alias. It's another way of saying push nil. And if I look at my data, I've got my bead, my orange, my green, and I actually now have nil. And if I count the array, well, I have one, two, three, four things in the array. There are still four things. What is the last one? It's nil. And what's the index? What's the index uh, equivalent of asking for this? What's the equivalent right now of asking for uh, the last value by index? Well, this is zero. Oops, this is zero. This is one. This is two. And this is three. So that's the same as if I had said data of three. Um, but it's interesting to note that the nil. The nil that we're getting in the case of asking for position three is slightly different than the nil that we might get if we ask for position four, because in the context of our array, there is no four. There is a three. There is a position three. It simply has nothing in it. We sit, we uh, manually, directly assigned it as nil. Uh, whereas in the case of four, that one is coming back as nil because that's the default value for when you don't have anything in an index. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, Another super common operation we want to do is add uh, well, I say super common. Another, it's slightly common, slightly less common than what we've looked at, but another interesting operator we might want to do is add something to the beginning. Um, so before we said we would append, append adds to the end, adding to the beginning is a little bit more complicated because in the case of appending, well, this is easy. I don't have anything here. So I simply like put my new, I simply create a new slot and put my thing in there. In the case of adding to the beginning, well, I already have something in index zero. And additionally, I already have a thing in one, two, and three. So if I want to put a new thing in zero, uh, I need to figure out something to do with all of the existing ones as well. So I'm going to leave this one to you. I'm going to give you 45 seconds prepend new bead. Let's call the next one a blue bead. Uh, prepend a new blue bead to the array and see what you come up with in terms of shifting your shifting your elements. Let's see. What I need here is I need a freaking yeah, one. And if has the howler timer. Hmm. I'll give up on this. Figure that out later. All right, so hopefully that hopefully you had enough time now to play around with that. Uh, what I need to do is first I need to get my bead. So got a fresh fresh new bead. Uh, in my case, I need to find a blue marker so I can color it in. And I need to shift all of the other elements down one spot so that I can make spot zero available for my new things, uh, for my new bead. And so the first thing I need to do is add a new slot for 
here. So you would need to add a new cup onto your paper. We're going to set that as four there. I'm going to go through and have to move all of my other ones. So first of all, I take what was in spot three, which is a nil. So I'm going to move nothing, move nil from three to four. Now three is available to have something in it. So I can move my thing that was in two, move my one, move my zero. And then finally, I can put my uh, new blue bead in what was position zero. And the Ruby way of doing this in code is we'll use the method called unshift. So I'd like you to pull up, pull up your IRB and go ahead and practice doing that now on your data. So I had what I have right now is data. Position zero is the bead. One is the orange bead. Two is the green bead. And three is that nil. I'm going to say data.unshift bead blue. And notice that it does basically what we had just done uh, with our cups. We end up with blue bead in the front. And I can verify that by asking you for what's at position zero. Oh, it's the blue. What's in one, the original bead. Uh, so we can verify all those. Um, we can verify all those and it uh, intelligently moved everything down a slot to make room. So. Uh, how's the video? We got video still on? All right. Ping me if y'all still not having video. I like these cups here too. Looking great. Uh, okay, cool. So there we're at now. Where do we leave off? Da, 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 da. Cool. All right. So uh, another thing that we can do is... Uh, Another operation we might want to do is insert data. Let's see if I'm gonna get the use this, yeah. Insert at a position. while uh, we might say like relocating existing elements. And so the model here is that suppose I wanted to put something at two, but take, I, there, there are two ways I could insert something at two, right? When I already have something at two. The one is I could take my new bead and I could replace two with the new one and get rid of two, just toss it away, right? Uh, the uh, other way that I might want to do is I could say, let me put a new thing at two and let me move other things down. Actually, let me double check this before I tell you all something bogus, but. Yeah, I'm right. I'm right, guys, cool. Uh, I want to insert those things down. And so I'm going to make a, I actually have a yellow. Is I'm running out of marker colors up here, but that's OK. Let's suppose that in this context, I said data insert at position two, a yellow bead. Well, similar to how when we unshifted at the beginning, we had to move everything down. I now need to move all of these ones down to make room for my new bead. So I'm going to actually have to clean some space here. And I'm going to create a new slot for a new cup. And I actually have to get a new cup. And I actually have to get some sticky tack, which I have misplaced. So you'll need to add another cup to your array as well. And now when I move these, I'm going to move the nil from uh, what was four into my newly created position five. I'm going to move my green from what was three to my newly created position four, or to four. Move that, oops, dropped one there. Move uh, two to three. And finally, my new value yellow can go into uh, position two. So insert is what we do. We'd say data. 
insert position and then the value so if I wanted to do that right now well I already did it so I said what I did a second ago was data insert at position 2 I said a tangerine bead I actually used a yellow one and notice that what is the count now Oh, it's six. Okay, I have six things. Zero is blue because we had unshifted blue onto the beginning of the array. Uh, one is our original first bead that we started with. Now two is the new yellow bead that I created and inserted into position two, and everything else was shifted down to make room for it. So insert will shift and make room. Uh, where are we going now? Cool, cool, cool. Uh, uh, one more good one is uh, another operation, remove last element. Uh, there we go. Sometimes we'll want to remove the last element and the Ruby method for this is pop. We pop an element off the array. Uh, and what's interesting about this is it is the the pop method removing a thing from the end of an array is going to do two things. One, it's going to return to you that value. It's going to give you back. Uh, we would say it yields the value that was held in the final position of the array. And additionally, it's going to remove that index from the array. It's going to remove that bucket or that slot from the array. So in our case right now, I have a slightly interesting situation. We had previously inserted a nil. We inserted nil into, I think, originally three then it got shifted to four, and then it finally got shifted to five. So right now the contents of my data are nil, and I could verify that by saying data.last, nil, okay. Data at position five, nil. Um, that's what we have there. So uh, I want to pop it off, so I would say array data.pop. It would give me back a nil. Here I have the nil in my hand. Can you see it? It looks good. Uh, and then also it's going to get rid of that slot five. So we're gonna actually reduce the number of slots in our array. Uh, so now running data.count, tell me that there are, oh wait, I didn't run it yet. Currently there are six. Pop a value, okay, here's the nil. Here's the nil that you asked for. Here's the thing that was in the last position. Finally, what's the current count? Okay, now there are only five, right? So we're down to slots zero, one, two, three, and four. Remove the last one. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, so that's kind of what I got there. I'm going to leave you all those last two up to you. Uh, let's take a second and pausing for any questions. Uh, I know that's a lot of stuff we kind of ran through the last few minutes. So uh, if there's anything from like earlier in the session you want to go to or whatever, <laughs> uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for like bearing with us in the, the hangout. I know it's not the best conditions, but hopefully you all were able to follow along fairly well. And if you love arts and crafts, don't worry, there will be a few more a few more arts and crafts lessons coming your way. <clears throat> uh, is there? Uh, yeah, so uh, Josh is asking an interesting question. Is there a method similar to insert that lets you remove an element from the middle of the array and have the rest shift over? So I want something kind of like how I popped the nil off the end. Uh, kind of like how I popped the nil off the end. Uh, it removed that slot, I would say like pop two or remove two and it would both give me back the bead that was at spot two and get rid of that spot and collapse these over. Uh, I believe, so the, it, first of all, it's an interesting question to ask and the answer, one of the great things again uh, about Ruby, kind of praising Ruby's ease of use and, and niceness uh, as a language is that the answer to that question is almost always yes, at least in the context of arrays. Ruby. Uh, the Ruby built-in array class comes with a really extensive suite of various methods to do all kind of different operations that you might want to do. These ones that we've been looking at are kind of some of the basic fundamental ones, but um, there's always a lot more things to look at. So um, one easy place to check is Ruby array method documentation. Just Google something like that, and you'll find the docs here for an array. And we could scroll through here. And I think that uh, the method Josh was asking about, I'm pretty sure is delete at. 
So notice here I have the array of ant, bat, cat, dog. I delete at position two, which would be the cat. It returns to me the value cat, and the array is now ant, bat, dog. So uh, delete at is the method you're looking for. But the maybe the more important note is that uh, there's almost always a way to do something with an array. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of searching around to find, like, hey, what's the thing that I'm trying to do? All right, Christopher says, when I enter array.methods, it shows a prepend method. But when I try to use it, I get undefined thing. So data.methods. Uh, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing the prepend. You might have been looking at this. Yeah, okay, so this is interesting. Uh, you're, this is a tricky thing that we don't have maybe time to go into right now, but uh, when you're looking for, uh, if you're trying to find out from, say, IRB if an object has a method, uh, first of all, there's a method called methods. It's a little bit meta, but you can say something like data.methods, and this will return to you an array of a list of all the methods that are on that object. The thing to note is you generally want to look at the an instance of the class rather than the class itself. So if I ask the class, remember capital A array, that is the class array itself. So array.class, it's a class. Uh, if I ask that for its methods, it's going to be a different thing than what I get if I ask an individual array object for its methods. So generally, this is what you want to look at. Um, We'll talk more about that in a couple of days. Uh, if I set the value up, for instance, position 10, uh, yeah, so that's actually a great question, Geneva. We didn't look at that example, but suppose um, I had this, and I'm like, let me say array. We can come back to do it in Ruby. Let's say I said data. Okay, data insert at, or I can just do this. I can say data at position 9, or let's do 4. Let's do 6, so I don't have to make so many cups equals bead, I don't know, move. Maybe we have a move bead. And if I look at my data now, notice that it filled, here's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I inserted a move bead at position six, and it filled an empty slot in between. So um, the array does not, it doesn't have a notion that there are, um, non-contiguous elements. So if you're gonna, if you have things in four, zero through four, and you wanna add something at seven, it's gonna fill them in. And so to model that, I would get a, uh, we'd have to make these two. And then I'd have to stick up cups for those. So here's for the five. And here's for the, six and then my bead would go in position six oops let me move this over a little bit my bead would go in position six whereas five is now empty so uh that's a good question that's sometimes you'll hear uh there's a term for this called a sparse array this array is sparse because it has uh spots in the middle that are empty oops i'm pointing at the thing it has spots in the middle that are empty so Cool, good question. Uh, any other questions? So, wouldn't the array, I mean, the array class is the method, but wouldn't an instance inherit all the methods of this class? Yeah, it doesn't exactly work that way. We're going to talk about it another time. So, we'll talk about it later this week, actually. All right, all right, cool. So uh, I think that about wraps it up. So what do we got right now? Let me pull up the calendar real quick. We uh, So originally we were going to have improv this afternoon for you guys. That's going to happen tomorrow morning instead. Uh, so I had to shift some things around to make that work. So uh, what we'd like to do, Foxtrot, you're going to join me at 1 o'clock, and I'm going to give you uh, a couple chapters of a book to read for the afternoon in preparation for some exercises that we're going to work on later. Uh, Foxtrot, you're going to meet with Mike at, I'm uh, sorry, Echo, you're going to meet with Mike at 1 p.m. Uh, via Hangout as well to kick off some other exercises that y'all are going to work on for the afternoon. So the afternoon is going to be uh, mostly some kind of guided exercise that we're going to, exercises that we're going to give you 
uh, and for Foxtrot, a little bit of reading to support that uh, activity as well. So go take some lunch, uh, be back at one and ready to jump into some more stuff. Cool, see you in a little bit.